Now I want your cheeks on the ground and then we're gonna twist like we're turning them in the turf. Now I know that sounds crazy, but let me get into the details of how we're finally gonna stop from standing up, losing that posture in the downswing. It causes us to flip and cast, causes all kinds of bad things to happen there. Well, there's three specific motions that, have to, that, that make this happen. And one of them involves your butt cheeks and the turf. I'll get to that in a minute. The first one is, where does our weight go in our feet? So if I'm standing up, what ends up happening is I'll let my weight shift forward to my toes early. That moves my hips forward and it gets my upper body standing back. So to do the opposite of that, we wanna feel like our weight is in our heels. So what I want you to do is make a few practice swings here, where as you start your downswing, you actually let your toes come off the ground. You're almost gonna feel like you're falling over if you do a little bit too much of this. So that's the first move. I actually wanna see those toes go up as that's happening and then make some swings where I come all the way on through. It's gonna feel weird. It's not supposed to feel good. I want the toes up and then coming back. I'm almost gonna fall over that way. It's actually important to over exaggerate that because it's so ingrained to do this and come toward the toes. That's gonna to take over if we don't exaggerate a ton. That's piece number one, weight in the heels, make some practice swings doing that. Piece number two, I want you to feel like your butt cheeks, both of them as at the start of the downswing, are on the turf. And I want you to feel, obviously that's really not gonna happen, I'm not gonna sit down on the ground when I'm doing this, but I wanna feel like I'm exaggerating that so much that I'd be putting my cheeks right on the ground as I'm making my downswing. I have yet to see a single player, I've yet to see a single person ever over-exaggerate this enough. It could happen, maybe you'll be the first, but I have not seen anyone over-exaggerate this too much yet. So my weight is back on my heels, my cheeks are on the ground, and then finally, here's the last piece of that. What I'll see players do, even if they start to get the weight going back, they start to squat a little bit better, which is good, they'll do one of two things. They'll keep the hips very still, and then all of a sudden their upper body will just kind of throw at it. Because if my hips don't open, I really can't swing through this shot very well and I end up throwing my hands and arms at it anyway. Or number two, they will, what I just talked about there, back out of it with their upper body and throw their hands at it. Both of those come from either keeping the hips too square or keeping the hips too square and backing up and throwing your arms at it. Both of those come from not turning or not twisting your body open. So once we get those cheeks feeling like they're on the ground, I have to twist my body open to the target. So number one, weights on the toe, weights on the heels. Number two, I'm sitting into the ground and from there, I have to make sure that I turn through this shot all the way to a good full finish. Now you'll notice when I finish this swing, I'll come to a nice high finish as I'm doing this. There we go, so even though I sat down, even though I had this downward motion here and I kept down all the way through contact, as I came to the full finish, everything came up, my chest is nice and high, my head's nice and high, and I'm coming all the way around here. I don't wanna stay down in my posture like that. Now, it's very important that we do one other piece correct when we're doing this too. If you wanna do this and get the most power, we have to make sure that we make a good backswing. So now that your downswing is better, now that you're feeling like you're staying in your posture, you're not standing up out of it, you're not doing this motion, how do we get some speed with that? I find that a lot of players can do that fairly slow motion once I work them through that progression, but they have trouble adding speed to it as a next step. That comes from the backswing. And when you pair the correct backswing up with the correct kind of sit and twist move, that's when you're gonna be playing some fantastic golf. There's a couple tricks to this. Most players never have been taught how to use the legs and the hips properly to allow that good full backswing. So it misleads you to thinking that you're a lot stiffer, a lot tighter, and a lot more limited than you are. On top of that, I'm gonna give you some secrets here that are gonna allow you to use the upper body to increase that turn even more. I'll play a preview video here in a second that's gonna show you how to get that turn from the lower body to the upper body. I'm gonna give you some fantastic tips to unlock your body, feel more free, as, more free than you ever have been before and add a lot of swing speed to that. 
you put that with what we learned here today, put those cheeks on the ground and twist, and you're gonna have a very pro looking swing. Best of luck, and I can't wait to see you in the bonus video that I'm about to play a preview of here in a second. All you need to do if you wanna see the full video is go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen or the link down below in the description. Don't worry if you don't see those cards, go down to the description below and click the link there. I'll see you in that video. Instruction out there today is killing you of your power. The things that they're telling you to do can make you hit it shorter and worse than that, not even any more consistent. I'm gonna go over some of the real secrets to powerful, consistent golf in this video. Let's go and get started. So here's some of the keys into making that happen. If you wanna incorporate this in your swing, let me break it down exactly what you should do. Number one, let's focus on the belt buckle. This is another big misconception. I wanna keep that belt buckle facing the ball so I can really stretch out my midsection and really get loaded up. I'm not a big fan of that. That's really gonna kill your distance. In your backswing, I wanna feel like that belt buckle rotates to the right and you really let your hips and legs be loose. Notice how my legs are moving here. I'm not trying to keep those rigid and tight or I'm really just taking all the speed out of my swing. All right, so on that one, I really felt like I let my belt buckle rotate back. And a good key to this is feel like your knees are loose. Feel like when you make your backswing. Piece number two, let's go ahead and rotate our shoulders. When I let my lower body rotate, my upper body can rotate a lot better also. So if I let my hips move, my shoulders will move more. So here, once I've got my hips working well, I'm gonna add to that my shoulders making a big rotation. On average, on the PGA Tour, players are getting about 120 degrees of shoulder rotation. I don't see hardly anybody getting less than 90 degrees. So it starts with the hips, knees nice and loose, allow the belt buckle to rotate, and then from there, so those are two really big keys. But here's the truth. There's one thing, and if you don't do this correctly, nothing else is gonna work.